Research shows that when you're surrounded by a very high decibel level, your taste perception goes down. So loud music means the food will have less flavor. It also is, it works the same on an airplane, where you have a high decibel level, and that's one of the reasons why you get less taste perception on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Now, I have uh, I have a chocolate bar sitting in front of me. Oh, this is going to be fun. We're going to conduct a, a taste test, right? This, this is an experiment live on the air on Science Friday. Right, what should I do here? And uh, I should say to listeners at home, you can do this at home right now with coffee. If you don't have dark chocolate handy, grab your mug of coffee. Here's what I want you to do, Ira. Yeah. I want you to take a bite of that chocolate and really hold it in your mouth and savor it. Our listeners at home, you do with your mm, coffee. Okay. And I want you to really note how sweet or bitter it tastes. Concentrate on how sweet or bitter the flavor is and really kind of give it a rating in your head. Mm-hmm. How sweet or bitter is it? Okay, I'm doing that now. Let me tell you what rating is. No, no, just mm-hmm. get it in your head. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. Now, it, it, you still, keep that chocolate in your mouth. Continue to think about how sweet or bitter it is. And now we're going to play some background music. Hmm. What do you think? You well, know, it was distracting a little bit. Okay. From the taste, but it didn't taste as sweet. Okay. Possibly more bitter. Hmm. Now, do you still have a good amount of chocolate mm-hmm. in your mouth? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, listeners if, at home, if you're out of chocolate or if you need more coffee, take another sip, fill your mouth, think again about how sweet or bitter it tastes, mm-hmm. and now listen to this. More, more pleasant. It's a more pleasant experience. Tastes a little sweeter. That's right. That's exactly wow. right. Well, why? What's going on here? Well, as Charles Spence explains it, Basically, when you have a food like a dark chocolate or a coffee that has a lot of varying and complementary or even contrasting notes like sweetness and bitterness, it can be hard for your brain to make sense of it all and to latch on to something. And these, these different pitch, pitches of sound and of music sort of act as um, ways to highlight certain features of a food. It's kind of like, you know, if you're drinking a glass of wine and some wine expert says, oh, don't you taste the notes of asparagus? Well, you know, now, of course, you taste it as soon as he says that. Right. Uh, it's a similar similar kind of function. And he actually explains that it, it all goes to this idea that, that we'll play a clip from him on this Porkful podcast of the way the mind and taste work together. The whole idea of taste and flavor is is a construction of our mind. It is all kind of an illusion that we think we taste food in our mouth when in fact most of the interesting stuff is happening in our nose. So, so flavors and tastes and flavors are full stop kind of, you know, a, an illusion. And, and if I think about things like um, there are certain smells that you will describe as sweet, Things like caramel and vanilla and maybe strawberry. Smells do not actually have a taste, but I can use those sweet smells to almost trick your brain into tasting sweetness that isn't there. Hmm. You can do that. And we've, uh, we've heard that he's backing up the idea that smell is a very important part of, of tasting. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm just generally fascinated with this idea that so much of what we perceive to be happening in our mouths is actually happening yeah. in our brains.